happening guys welcome back to the series on how to build a stock news crawler with Watson Discovery in the last video what we went through is setting up our web crawl data source and getting that to run every week so now what we're going to take a look into is what's being created so the data that's been imported and specifically we're going to take a look into the data schema so these are basically the fields and the constructs that Watson Discovery is found within our textual documents and they're the fields that we're going to be able to query later on. So, jumping back over to the dashboard that we got to in the last video, you should have something that looks a little bit like this. Now, what you've got up here is your web crawl name, so you can rename that if you want. So let's just do that for now. So if you hit the little pencil and rename it to stock news web crawl, Right, then what we can take a look at are the number of documents. So it looks as though we've got 971 documents that have been imported into our new web crawl. It looks like we've also got a bunch of errors. So we can take a look at these, but the majority of them are probably going to be due to our file restraints or our storage restraints. So it looks like we've probably hit our limit based on the free tier. Doesn't matter at this stage because we can always bump that up if we want to get more documents at a later stage. Uh, so jumping back over to overview, you can see we've got 971 documents. Uh, it's also identified one field in our data, so text, but we're going to look into that a little bit later on. And there's also a bunch of different enrichments, which we'll look, take a look at once we start jumping over to the schema. So this is basically your key dashboard for each collection. Now, a collection is basically a data source or a set of documents that you've collected from around the web. So that's just the way that Watson Discovery lumps the documents together. Right, without further ado, let's get to the data schema. So if you click this little button over here, you'll be taken to the data schema view, which looks a bit like this. Now there's two ways to analyze your, your data or your documents from this view. And the first one is the collection view, and the second is the document view. Key difference between those is that the collection view is basically going to group each of the fields together whereas the document view is going to group the fields based on each document. So rather than looking at every single type of field, here you can actually filter through by document. So each one of these here represents a different document in our web crawl, whereas in our collection view, each one of these just represents a different field. So you can see we've got text, we've got concepts, categories, and then a bunch of other stuff. So let's quickly go through each of those because this is the key part of this video, what, what's actually in our data schema. So jumping back into collection view, you can see that the first one that we've got is text. That one's pretty straightforward. It's just the text that's been collected or scraped from each of those documents as part of the web crawl. Now in the second one, or the second thing that we're taking a look at are concepts. Now concepts are basically key topics or themes that are found within each of the documents. So it's really to do with uh, high level objects or subjects that are found within each of these documents. So here we've got a subject of Jim Cramer. That might also be an entity, but for now it's actually classed it as a, as a concept. Uh, and we've got Jim Cramer quite a fair bit. And we've got stock market, you saw that pop up. But what you basically got is the text for each of the concepts. It's relevance, so you can see here that it's got a relevance of 99.6%, as well as the resource. So if we search that, we're actually taken to the resource that we've actually found within that document. Now, what we can also do, if you just keep hitting show more values, it'll go through each one of the different concepts. Now, this is only gonna show you a couple, so there are more that you'll actually be able to find once you start querying the documents, but we'll see that later. Now, you've also got categories. These are really high-level themes that are found throughout your document. So, these really differ from concepts in that concepts are constructs or theories or, or subject matter that, that actually are quite nuanced or, or detailed within the, your documents. Categories are very high level themes. So for example, you can see that we've got finance, invest, investing, trading, uh, sorry, investing funds and exchange traded funds. So it's that the theme of the document might be exchange traded funds. If we hit another one, we can see investing, again, very high level. Again, we've got ETFs. What else do we have? Seems only, we're only getting investing in ETFs, but again, once we start triggering queries, we'll see a lot more of that. Uh, entities are basically people, places, companies, anything which is a proper noun. So you can see here that it's identified Aaron Hankin as a key entity, and he's been identified as a person, so that's the type. 
Again, we've got the relevance and here we've also got count as well. So how many times this particular entity appears within the documents that we've got. So we can also check out some more values. You can see that we've got companies. So we've got market watch showing up as a company. We've got Baron showing up as a person. That might not be correct, but I mean, it's still pretty good. Bill Bischoff as uh, a person. Again, we've got a bunch of different people in here. So you can see that it's automatically pulling out the concepts, categories, and entities out of your document without actually explicitly saying or classifying these groups of, or, or the, these key entities within the text. Now, the other parts of the document that you'll also see is the extracted metadata. So that really is to do with the file name, file type, as well as the title of the document. You can also grab some other metadata, which is really to do with the HTML side of things. So you can see it's the content type. We've got a bunch of link IDs, we've got some URLs, as well as the application ID. And again, you've got a unique ID for that document. And then you've got the raw HTML for each one of those documents. Now, again, if you go into document view, you're going to get these exact same concepts or fields. It's just going to be grouped together for the entire document. So you can see that this is one document. But again, we've got the ID, we've got the metadata, we've got the text. You can see each of the entities that are popping up. So we can see that we've got uh, a bunch of other subtypes for each of these entities. We've got another entity, which is Bitcoin. And again, we've got a bunch of different entities here. So if we keep scrolling down, you can see that you've got quite a fair few of those, as well as the metadata. And there should be the HTML down the bottom, which there is. <clears throat> so that about wraps up looking at the data schema. So once again, this is really all to do with taking a look at the constructs that are being found within the document. In the next video, what we're going to take a look at is how to start querying against these fields. If you found this video useful, be sure to like, share and subscribe it. Thanks so much for watching. Peace.